how to get into the tongue mudra. Sitting upright at balance on a level surface, you bring the back of your tongue up against the rear top molars. You just bring your tongue up there. Let your tongue feel where those upper teeth and back are. You can move your tongue forward and backward scraping and you'll get a sense of it. And now that you've located it, you press the back of your tongue up against it as if to tuck the back of your tongue behind your upper rear teeth, tucking it. And keep your tongue tucked and turn slowly left and right with your face, keeping the contact at the upper rear with your tongue constant throughout. You may notice internal self-corrections occurring from doing that. And you can do that for any indefinite period of time. What you do then is you tip your head side to side. Now tipping your head is your top of your head is going either to the left or to the right. Your face stays facing forward. So it's a true sideways movement of the head and neck. And you keep that tongue in place in the back there and you tip your head side to side. Maintaining constancy in your connection with your tongue up there. And you can do a kind of serpentine movement in which you tilt your head to one side and your weight falls to that side. You tilt your head to the other side and your weight falls to that side. You just oscillate side to side and then gradually decrease the amount of the oscillation by decreasing the amount of head movement. Your tongue is still up there. If it isn't, you can put back up and do that movement again. And then once you've got that, there will have been, have been changes that occurred in you that will make the next moment very interesting, which is maintaining the contact of the tongue up or back Bring the tip of your tongue in front up to your gum line and feel those three points now, the two in the back and one in the front. And you may notice some sort of intense sensation go through the roof of your mouth up into the nasal passage, possibly even into the forehead. When you feel that, or some area that for you turns on, you breathe in such a way as to breathe across that place, back and forth, in and out. And what you're doing is fanning it. So you keep your attention there and breathe across it and then gaze at the place you're feeling while you breathe. So it's kind of like fanning combined with kindling. The gaze makes the combination of feeling in your nasal passage. That's like the bottom electrode of a spark plug and then feeling and gazing into it. The gazing is like the upper electrode and when you gaze into that place you're feeling, that's like the spark. So this is called the spark plug maneuver. Okay. Once you've got the spark plug maneuver, you can change the location of the spark by curving your tongue in cupwise fashion in different ways. If you bring your tongue down far enough, you will feel some change that occurs through the roof of your mouth and your nasal cavity by cupping your tongue like a spoon and you keep three points in contact while you cup. Okay, that's all important, all important. Three points, steady contact while you cup. 
and that will induce new sensations going up through. I don't even need to describe them. You'll feel them. And you breathe across that and gaze into it. And by cupping in different ways, you can get forward through the front of the nose or up at the top of the nose or all the way into the back deep where the um, back of the throat tops out and becomes the nasal cavity. And by exploring, you'll find there's all kinds of stuff that you may find in there, and you breathe across it and gaze into it as you breathe across it. And, uh, you know, like five minutes. And there's an application for this in, in by integrating it with the gold key release or other tetra seed modulations. Tetra seed means four. Seed is what the word says, so it's a seed of four parts. That is the fundamental atom of existence as we experience it. I'm not talking about you know chemicals here. I'm talking about structure. Structure is something that is true of atoms. There's atomic structure. Okay, we're not talking about chemistry, just about structure. There's the primal atom of experience, which consists of four aspects, or four faculties. A faculty is a, an ability one may exemplify as a certain faculty. They have facility with something, that means they're good with a certain faculty. And there are four in the Tetra Seed. And not necessarily emerging in this order, but attention is one. And attention has to do with location in the physical universe. And attention is always about locating something. Then we have imagining. And imagining implies coming into existence newly newly coming into existence it isn't remembered yet it's just emergent and as such it is unknown what is emerging until the emergent integrates with the rest of your memory of how things are finds its place so this is another name for uh, origination the process of origination or entropy. Entropy is what generates novelty all the time. Entropy's gotten a bad rap, but entropy is actually the development of more and more states of existence, which kind of dilute the energy instead of being concentrated in one place. So we have emergence. And in the physical universe, what is emerging is always new experience of some sort always so the emergence of atoms from the historical big bang gas plasma the flash bulb in the sky the emergence of discrete structured atomic matter from what was before then a much, much finer flux, much, much finer and not organized at all in the way that the basic structures of existence do. It was much finer. It was more like a foam of scintillating on and off all asynchronously. So it was like a scintillating foam of on and off constantly. Where was I? Oh, yes. So, evolution. The evolution of matter. The evolution of life forms. All of that is the action of emergence or origination. Things being originated. They're being brought forth from origin into existence kind of as a coalescence of some concretized idea or something 
something that occupies our attention and becomes more and more stable and enduring, that transmits the information of the emergent into the matrix of material existence and you end up with material forms that express that subtler field existence. Emergence occurs first in the field as a subtle uh, congealing of attention, intention, memory, and imagination. Without attention, there's no way to locate it. Without imagining, there's no way to relate it to what we already know. If we don't intend anything relative to it, it's utterly irrelevant to us and we would not even notice it. And memory, which is duration, that is to say persistence of a pattern in some stable function. It can be dynamic, but there's a certain structure to it or a certain harmonic feel to it, a certain quality to it that has a certain duration in time that it persists, continues, we continue to feel it's recognizable, it has some duration. That's memory. So those four facets are fully grounded in the nature of even the physical material universe is just a particular expression it takes in somatic beings to take the forms of attention, imagining, intending, and remembering. It just happens to be our function. If we don't remember something, we can't even recognize it. I have no idea what it is. If there's a, no intention, it's irrelevant. If there's no imagining, there's no way to relate it to memory to make sense of it. And if we don't uh, have any attention on it, we have no experience, we have nowhere, we're not relating to anything. So you need all four. You can't do it with one or three. That's a minimum of four. And that is what we call the Tetra Seed. Now there are ways of playing the facets of the Tetra Seed, the four faculties in different orders, that is sequences from one to the next, and even different rhythms and different directions. And those are just three abstractions when talking about it, but when you do it, it's embodied in the action patterns, which are recognizable when you're doing it. So, Tetra Seed. Now, the Tetra Seed modulations, the word modulation implies a kind of a, a self-regulating change or some change that is a controlled change. It is modulating. It isn't uh, what would even be the alternative to modulating. Uh, not changing at all, actually. That would be the opposite of modulating. And so we have tetra seed modulations. These different procedures that I have given such whimsical names to as the gold key release, the setup, the thunderbolt, sorry, no, the thunderclap, and the lightning bolt. And the middle way memory matrix ritual which is the King Kong of all of them. <laughs> the others, certain of them, are, oh yeah, there's the spell Maker Breaker, or you can split them into two and have the spell Maker and the spell Breaker. And that pairing is closely similar to the Wish Fulfilling Gem. And all of these have particular functions particular behaviors, particular effects. Very distinct. It's very interesting how just changing the order 
and the sequence of the same four elements can create so many different effects. Four elements, sort of similar to the number of nucleic acids in the DNA structure. That is to say, the arrangement of those four nucleic acids, four, count them, four. That's all there are. And they're arranged in so many different ways and repetitions and t twists from one location to another. And four is all it takes. DNA, four. Tetraseed, four. Could there be a relationship? That is not something that we have investigated. It will be fascinating to someone to investigate it. But for now, I just explained the nature of tetraseed modulations. The next thing, of course, is to experience them. And there is no substitute for experience. So, we've got the tongue mudra. And here's the hint. If you learn one or more of the tetraseed modulations and then you do tongue mudra while running those modulations in yourself, modulating your own tetraseed structure, because it's your own memories, your own attention, your own intentions, and your own imaginings that constitute your particular tetraseed. It, and it, you're dynamic all the time, within a certain range, uh, generally. But it's still your tetracy. There's still four. That's it. Just four. Attention, imagination, intention, remembering. Okay. Which, by the way, is the structure of the spell maker. It's the very simple structure. Attention or attending, attending, imagining, intending, remembering, attending, imagining, Intending, remembering. Around and around. I suppose I should call that the cyclotron. The spell maker. There's like a cyclotron. It fits with the other names I've been giving to these things. And then the spell breaker would have to be the cyclotron in the opposite direction. They should make for particles colliding with each other, which in fact is what happens when you combine the two and oscillate between the two. That is, you do one, one cycle, then do the other one cycle, and back and forth in the positive direction of the spell maker and in the negative direction of the spell breaker. And you go back and forth between those two. And then once you're proficient to doing that, you can choose some sort of an item that you want to make a spell. You want to spell it into existence. You want to cast a spell. <laughs> well, that's what you use the spell maker for, and that's the order I've given you. Attention, or attending, imagining, intending, remembering. round and around. You just have to remember it now. 